This is a Zenith 25 inch console picked up the other day. Now the chassis is a 12A12C52. I found it advertised with this tube removed like that. The horizontal output looks to be original. The damper is a replacement and the high voltage rectifier was pulled. That's also a replacement. Uh, I was looking around the side here and wondering what that in there was, that corrosion on the chassis there. I don't know if you can see that, but that's... Further into the cage, and you can see the... Uh, it must have been a dead mouse or something because uh, there's all this paper stuff in there. So they've been in here. I'm used to this, this type of stuff now. Yeah, we don't get pristine uh, estate finds here. We get, it's been out in a barn or in a basement. Smokers set and uh, of course then you get tenants that move in that don't pay rent. But uh, they may check the CRT, that's original 25 BAP 22. All in all, it's a pretty original, original output tube and uh, a damper and the high voltage rectifier has been replaced. So I'm going to take this off and vac that refuse out of there anyway. Yeah, so there's pieces of nuts. There's nothing under the chassis, but in there, I'll probably just try and pluck this paper towel. All kinds of baloney in there. They always pick the uh, best places to uh, nest, that's for sure. So what story does this tell us? I see a new filter can back there, 1977, date code. And we have our little mouse house in there, piece of cloth, paper. We'll try and clear that out of there and clean this up a little bit. And we'll just do the put back for now. You can no doubt there see the corrosion from a carcass on the chassis, but uh, the rest of it appears okay. I'm just going to get a look around this chassis. This is a Model A4520. That um, may be a date code, 1968 for this. I'm not certain. Uh, i get some pictures around this chassis here. Before I go further, I've got the cage out, I've got the flyback out, I've got the vacuum. Everything's turning into a mini project. We already found, discovered this here. Which is kind of a good thing, but the more you mess around and disturb this stuff, the more chances there are of breaking things. I took the extension off of the focus control. This control is kind of loose, but I think that's the way it is. It's only the horizontal centering. All right, I'll get some pictures of this before I try to pull this aside. Uh, the only thing is the rubber grommets are holding, and they're kind of stiff. So let's get this out of here. Believe me, this is not as nearly as far as I wanted to go with this. Just look at that in there. kinds of everything. I really dislike these creatures. I really do. They really are a nuisance. Okay, I'm just going to go and clean this stuff up. This is the winding, which hopefully they haven't eaten through. These are the couple of turns around the base of the flyback that lights the... Uh, Oh, it's a 3DB3 or whatever this is. This is a 3DC3? 3... 3DJ, 3DB. Uh, there's a number of them. Okay, let's, let's clean this out and inspect it. 
Okay, of course under here there's coils. You say this is the filament for the high voltage rectifier. These had to be changed in admirals quite often. I could do a set in probably an hour or something. These these used to snap inside the case and arc. For some reason that that age I knew exactly what it was. Anyway, hopefully they didn't chew chew chew. But they did chew here. Probably just put some liquid tape on that. Um, okay, the rest appear okay. And this is preliminary. We're not even going to plug this in. That's why you don't just go and plug these things in. Which I'm sure this was already had already happened. Maybe, hopefully, this stopped it in its tracks. Okay, because we are outside and the skies are changing. This is how I'm going to leave this. Yes, there is some corrosion there I can treat. Once this thing is out of here and on the bench, but for now I'm just going to... Uh, I say it's pretty clean in there now. I'll wipe down a little more. We'll set this back up into position. I may wipe that out and wipe the fly back a little bit just to prevent arcing and that sort of thing and put this thing back together so it can be tested down the road. Continuing on with this cage cleanup, I wipe the uh, anode lead down. I don't want to move things too much because everything is stiff and brittle. Uh, I wipe the chassis a little more. I'm not using any chemicals. I don't want any I've run into trouble using chemicals around electronics. So uh, I'm using just this is just orange rinds and a little apple cider vinegar that I was going to throw out, but it's uh, been fermenting here for a while. And uh, it, it cleans pretty good actually. I've restored a number of things by using that. So I'm just going to wipe the cage out with it. A little bit and wherever I see any stuff I don't like. I'll wipe the inside of the cage with it and wipe the fly back down. I believe that's our date there. It says 88567. It's also stamped over here 88567. So this must be a 68 set. It has these references to 68 all over it. Okay. Even up here it says 68. So I'm not sure what the zenith codes are, but uh, okay. Okay, other than a little bit of corrosion in that corner that I probably could work on and get out, but I think it's a little beyond. Um, clean the wires up there and I'll put a piece of tape on that one because I'll forget and we're gonna put this back so we can at least do some baseline testing okay there we wrapped ourselves with some electrical tape uh, that's not a high voltage wire although there is probably some good potential on there being red but I really don't like electrical tape I can't really stand it actually but six months this will all be unraveled and exposed again but we'll keep on the positive okay reassembled everybody that's in there nice and clean as clean as I can get uh, rubber grommets anode lead focus lead uh, the tubes um, I put my focus extension back on there so we're pretty good in there that one taped wire is in there somewhere. We're going to have to check that at the later date, but at least it's taped. I'm going to close this so I can put the um, so I can put the horizontal or output uh, the regulator back in. This one has a 77 date code on it, uh, so it's been replaced. Um, the the damper is a 6DW4, and it did say FC on it, Frank Charlie, but I got my fingers on it or something, because you've got to be careful when you wipe these tubes. Um, 
FC, but it has a 6DW4 in it. It's supposed to be a 6CL3, I believe. So some of you out there may know the answer to that. And our 6LB6 is a Zenith tube, not original. It has a date code of 1975 on it. I did not rub that one off. That says 7530 and 274 underneath it. So I'm going to put these back in. We still have the broken uh, red wire here. That got too close to the output tube, obviously, so uh, this set may actually run now. We don't know. We're going to try it today. That'll be another adventure. At least it's back. In a, in a position where it can at least be uh, baselined. Or remove the output tube horizontal and the vertical output tube and uh, try it and measure the, the B plus and whatnot. Make sure the low voltages are okay. Uh, maybe we could check the CRT real quick. I'm not sure. Now we'll get to checking the CRT in another episode. Uh, it's just too cold and crappy out here. And uh, I'm going to button this thing up. I did leave one screw out there, but I managed to put it back because I heard the cage pop open, and that's because the screw was missing. Okay, that's it for now. We'll put the back on here for our Zenith 25 inch. We'll get on to some more projects. At least this is at a baseline. Okay, before we finish up, I'll give you a look around the uh, front of this set to show you what it looks like. Oh, if I can get around the front here. Little green halo, but all Zeniths of this era did that. The cabinet's not too, too bad on top. 